The following Depp vs. Heard, Marilyn Manson, pop culture, celebrity news, and if you watch this channel, you know I do a lot of short videos, six to eight minutes, I talk really fast, I get the info out there, but today we won't be doing that. Today, I'm going to take a step back and slow down, because I want to talk about the Marilyn Manson case, and just with no article, nothing but actually what I think, and how I think about life. First of all, I think mathematics is the language of the universe, there's nothing in this universe you can't break down and explain with numbers and mathematics. Let's keep that in mind. Now you're looking at Alan Manson, and I put this here on purpose. He's a character, he's scary, and what Evan Rachel Wood and her supporters and Ilma Gore want you to believe is that because of this image, he's this guy, this scary guy, and they should be believed. But the only thing I want you to think about is math. I want you to think about mathematic probability today because that's the first thing I thought about when I heard the allegations against Marilyn Manson. Let's start with one person coming out against Marilyn Manson with allegations of whatever sort. This one person comes out and they forget evidence. They couldn't get evidence. It got lost. They don't have evidence, but they got to get their story out. All right. That's fine. One person forgot it. That's pretty probable. And I'm doing this because people say there's 20 women out against Marilyn Manson. So let's keep thinking about that. Let's say three women come out. Well, now we got three. So what are the odds of one person not having evidence, forgetting it, or whatever, compared to now the odds of three people not having evidence, forgetting it, or whatever. Well, now those odds are pretty good that someone might have something, somewhere, but no. But all right, I'm into cutting people slack because the allegations are from about 20 women. So fine, let's bump that up to five. Now five women came out and there's still nothing. Well, mathematically, let's start to multiply the odds of no one having evidence up to five women and now you got to think, really? Maybe four of them had nothing. That one didn't. Okay, it's only one person. But now there's five of them, and none of them have anything. Let's keep going. Ten women come out. Now you're thinking, some people, how could ten women be wrong? Well, if one of them had some evidence, or two of them at this point, they probably wouldn't be wrong. Two of them would have the evidence, the others might agree, the others would look better, and then maybe you have something more believable. But that's not the case. Ten women, no evidence, medical report, police report, real photos, audio recordings that are actually Marilyn Manson are not there. Now we got a problem. Well, let's bump that up. Five, ten, fifteen women come out, no evidence. Now, what are the mathematical odds that 15 women have forgot the evidence, they were too scared to get it, they didn't speak out, whatever the reason is, it's not there. Well, there's more than 15 women accusing Marilyn Manson, so at this point, let's knock it up to 20 women. Now, think about that first thing I said. What are the odds of one woman not having evidence against Marilyn Manson? Maybe. She lost it. She couldn't get it. She didn't think of it. She's scared. All right. Like one-on-one, -on -one, he said, she said 50-50. But once the number grows and grows and grows, so does the mathematical probability that someone will have some evidence. Now, let's say 50 women came out. There'd be some people like, how could 50 women be lying? Well, if none of those 50 women had any evidence, how could they not be lying? Your whole judgment needs to be not what you see right there, but what the evidence is. Think about the odds. What if 100 women came out? Over 10 years, 100 women come out. Now you're like, all right, that's 100. Oh my God. Well, you know, there's 100 of you now, so someone must have something. What do you have? And if 100 women didn't have evidence, that's just weird. Let's say it's a thousand. Let's say two thousand. Let's say three thousand. It doesn't matter. 
the higher the number goes, the more probability there is of them actually just saying that and making things up. I would tend to believe one person or two people or three with no evidence before I'd believe 20 with no evidence because the odds of getting that evidence are a fact of reality. You move through this life, you do things, you move your hands, you write things down, you take pictures, you have witnesses. As you move through life, these things materialize. So if nothing materialized out of all these people saying something, that's a little bit strange. When Evan Rachel Wood knows Amber Heard, who's proven to be a hoaxer and a liar, that doesn't help. Now let's also think about evidence and probability. People like to say, you know what? It's not in the personality of a victim to come forward. It's difficult. Okay, maybe for that one person, it was difficult. Maybe for two, three, four, even five. Maybe it was difficult to come out. I got that. But when you've got 20 different women with 20 different personalities, 20 different brains, 20 different ways of doing things in life, the odds of them all staying silent actually decrease. So at that point, someone would probably come out. So when you scope it without thinking about who Manson is, who Evan Rachel Wood is, none of it. Only think about probability and numbers going up or numbers staying small. You've got yourself something to think about there. And of course, Marilyn Manson being scary doesn't help. And that makes it even easier for them to say, yeah, look at that. He did this. So if you had to ask me, I would say we do have another version of Amber Heard here in Evan Rachel Wood and Elma Gore, but I'll give it a chance. If they actually present evidence that they should have between the 20 of them, I'll have my mind changed. I'll be the first to make a video with that evidence and say, this is what we have. Not Esme Bianco's back whipped from Instagram from who knows what from who knows when, if it's even her, she doesn't show her face, she doesn't have scars on an open back dress, just like Amber didn't. So my point is, with real evidence, my mind will be changed, and I'll be happy to report on that. That's what I do. I want to get out the facts. But so far, no one can send me anything. People come around here, you know, the Johnny Depp case is different. Johnny's not Marilyn Manson. And they're right. That's true. Johnny's not. But we still need the standards of evidence. So if you come around here and you say that, I'm an open book. Send me the evidence you got. Send me why you were convinced. But what I'm not accepting is things Marilyn Manson said in a song, in a book, in an interview. I'm not accepting allegations that are baseless. Some have been proven false, thrown out of court. What I'm accepting is actual evidence I can showcase so the people who are on Marilyn Manson's side can also say, look, we were wrong, here's the evidence. And without that, it's your gut feeling. And if you think about mathematics, gut feelings kind of get less and less in importance when it comes down to the actual reality. If you're following Manson, the best way to go, definitely Colonel Kurtz. She's got some great videos. I'll link her below. I've done a video on her channel. Might do another one at some point. Especially if you're on the fence, you don't know the facts, you're trying to figure it out for yourself, see what's right, see what's wrong. Consider subscribing here. I'm doing pop culture, celebrity news, stuff like that. Death vs. Heard, Little Manson. If you don't subscribe, I'll be pretty sad about it, but I'll get over it, make a new video. See you next time.